Hi, I'm Jay Patello. I actually work for Savvy, so one of the vendors. Um, but it, it's really not a vendor pitch. I don't want it to be a vendor pitch. You'll see pictures of our products in there and occasional references to products in there. But I, I'm hoping you all address it with an open mind. The things that I'm going to talk about in here are basically about how to capture packets. Because you know, as we, even as we just heard right at the very end, right, these, these Wireshark classes, the important part, really, to me, is, is getting the packets in to begin with. Until you have the package, you can't really analyze the packets. Do all that other work that a, that a packet an analyzer is going to do, no matter whose you choose. So I want to go through some various techniques for doing that. Um, and again, these techniques, though, um, though I may reference our products in there, these are extendable to, to pretty much anything you can use in the industry. And I'll try to make uh, those references along the way as I go. Um, just a few other observations. Number one, I think the only difference between a 30-minute talk and a 10-minute talk is you don't need to talk as fast. OK, that's the, because those 10-minute talks, boy, they're pretty dense. Um, and I kind of feel a little bit like, uh, like Dave Wright was saying this morning, you know, always here and always talking about LTE. I feel the same way about myself, always here, but I'm sure everybody's saying, it's not the guy that always talks about packet capture, because that's pretty much all I end up talking about. So with that, uh, we'll kind of get rolling here. So what's popping up on this slide are, are really just a number of different devices in different forms that can be used for packet capture. Some of it's software, some of it's hardware, some of it's used in combination. And you know, I'm going to go through, you know, in a little bit of detail, a slide on each these different ways that, that you can use these products to do this. Some of them might be recognizable, and some maybe not recognizable. And just a few slides on why it's important. You know, why am I talking about this? Why is it important to you guys? Hopefully it is important to you guys. But the, the, it's really a garbage in, garbage out kind of approach here, right? If you're not able to collect packets for troubleshooting uh, correctly, adequately, using the right technologies and the right techniques, um, you're not ever going to be able to analyze or troubleshoot the problems that you're, you, you try, that you're trying to do that for. So that's really a critical issue. And it, also because it, it may look easy, but it's not, right? Getting there, and, and I just had to throw in a reference to the Patriots, so I'm sorry, sorry about that. I'm a fan. Probably not, probably not popular in the room, but uh, it's popular amongst about 10% of us maybe. Um, but it's really hard to get here, right? So um, that makes it look easy. You're holding up the trophy. You've solved the problem. It's great. But it's very, very difficult to get there. And hopefully by learning something about it, you know, it'll be a way where you know, we can all learn to make a little more money for ourselves, for our, for our companies, whatever. So ways to capture packets. Let me count the ways. So I identified 11. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure you're going to look at the list and go, boy, some of those are, are kind of repetitive. You're just trying to make, put more on the list. That really wasn't any, the goal of really any of that. Uh, I, I, I put them, I made distinctions like between the first two, for example, and an AC adapters for a reason, because there are differences that we should just kind of briefly chat about there. I, I've brought them up at other conferences, but it's always worth, worth refreshing. But you know, there's 11 techniques there. And again, probably more, learning more all the time. There's probably techniques that, you know, based on the, the maker session yesterday and the maker session today, where you could kind of make your own device for doing packet capture with, with some of the tools and techniques that are being learned. So th there's a lot there behind this. But the list of 11 seemed a little long, so I, I wanted to try and group them together. So when it comes to doing packet capture for wireless LAN analysis, I, I have three categories with, with my own names on them, not that they're really unique names. Um, there's always debate as to what you would call these different approaches. We have debates internally about how we would call these, these different approaches. But this is the way I like to think about them. So first, it's portable. I think everybody kind of agrees with that. Portable is, yeah, I'm going to walk in with my laptop with USB dongles hanging off it. And there's a, you know, a picture next. And that's going to be portable analysis. That's probably what most people in the room are familiar with. It's probably what most people do. It's probably what most people are going to do, right? Because you, you don't necessarily, unless you're a managed service provider or work for uh, an enterprise or a university or, or a, a medical uh, establishment yourself, um, you, you know, you're, you're moving around a lot. You have different clients all the time. You're going to be portable. And the ones that, that work out as being portable are the 11N and the 11AC adapters. Um, actually con directly connecting an AP to your laptop. You may not consider that portable, but it's, it can be portable. Um, it can be effective, and we'll talk about that one in a minute. Um, 
maybe even just, just something as simple as using a MacBook or a MacBook Air to capture the packets and looking at them with something else. And um, lastly, just something that is actually unique to us is using the MacBook with TCP dump in this kind of somewhat kludgy combination uh, to actually use it with OmniPeak. So that covers the, the, the portable case. The remote case, and I, I have a little picture on the, on the right-hand side, that's kind of what's important, right? That's trying to show the difference between what's portable and what's remote and, and what is going to be distributed, the last one. So portable, of course, it's standalone. That's why there's just one little computer there. Remote, what I'm saying there is the ability to capture the data remotely but bring it locally to do the analysis. So you're still doing the analysis locally with whatever computer you're using, but you've somehow deployed something remotely to get the packets back to you. It might be over the network, as you'll see in some of the cases, it might be that you have to move files back to yourself somehow, but all the analysis gets done locally. So some of those techniques are using a network USB hub. I'm gonna show you a picture of one. I think this is a, it's a unique little solution that I don't think a lot of people have ever employed that you can make very inexpensively for, for yourself. Um, there's remote capture assistance, as I call them, and I'll get into more detail on all these, TCP dump and, and remote peek out. And then lastly, it's distributed. So distributed is really where not only have I captured the packets remotely, I'm actually gonna do the analysis remotely as well. It's all gonna reside in some remote location. It's gonna probably run 24 by seven. It's gonna continually collect statistics 24 by seven. And I'm only gonna use a computer to attach and see the results of that analysis that was done. Um, again, that's the, this is a, a situation that's probably more suited to when you're in an enterprise or, you know, you, you, or you're the network administrator for an enterprise or um, a hospital, um, a university, et cetera, that's typically where, where this is used. It's typically not used with a consultant, um, but, but it can be, especially if you want to leave something behind for a few days because you're kind of trying to capture some sort of intermittent problem that's, that's difficult to, uh, to, to get the data on. Okay, so let's get into the details of each one of those. So the first one, you know, the, the direct connected USB wireless LAN adapters, um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Again, this, like I said, this is what most of us do today. That's a picture of my other laptop on my desk, three uh, USB dongles dangling off of those are 11 ends. Uh, um, the nice thing about this is it's fully portable, right? Um, and the reason everyone likes this kind of approach is because you can capture multiple channels simultaneously. So I can attach multiple adapters. In that case, there's three. And, and the advantage of that is I can now, in a single capture, assign one adapter to channel, let's just use the 2.4 for now, even though we're not using that, but one, six, and 11, right? And I can, in a single capture, be getting timed packets relative to all three channels in a single capture. That lets me do things like roaming, uh, you know, follow clients around as they go, so it's everything in a single capture. That's, that's what's always been very popular about the portable, you know, I think, you know, just the fact, besides the fact that it's just portable. Um, so that's, you know, it's probably it. And it's relatively inexpensive. These adapters are commercially available. Uh, they're inexpensive. The only thing that's unique about them, and it's in the cons, is you, you need specific drivers to uh, be able to use the, the wireless LAN adapter. So not every wireless LAN adapter can be used with, with every packet capture solution, right? Um, also, in the case of AC, right now, at least for USB connected devices, two stream is the best we can do. So there are no three stream USB adapters, at least that I'm aware of. And I focus back on the USB again because of that multiple connectivity. You know, you could do mini PCI inside your computer, but now you're back to one channel. And that reduces a lot of the, the benefits of doing the, the portable kind of capture. Um, and you know, the other thing about portable is you, you need to be present to win, right? You need to be there. You need to be where the packets are. That, you know, from a consultancy standpoint, that might be easy most of the time. From an enterprise standpoint, especially a, lot, a, a distributed enterprise, that's not easy all of the time. It's not always too easy to be where that wireless problem is. You know, and, and lastly, and I, I know I've made this point here at, at this conference and at others uh, before, but it, it's becoming a bit more of a challenge for this approach because these wireless LAN USB adapters that we use, though 
excellent sources of, of packet capture, uh, they're dinosaurs. Uh, uh, there's, there's really no commercial reason. I'm surprised there's still some on the market even. You know, what, why does anybody want to buy a wireless LAN USB adapter? Everything has 802.11 built into it, and that was the whole point of a USB adapter, right? So they're not going to be around much longer. We're not going to see three stream versions. It's just, it's just not, it's not going to be there. So, you know, but we're going to need to also find more flexible solutions, and I'll talk about that a little more at the end, for being able to capture these packets. That's just kind of the, the first, the portable. Um, directly connecting an AP to your analyzer um, sounds kind of, kind of clunky, but we actually demonstrated it here two or three years ago. Um, Peter McKenzie got up here, because in the bag, we'd given away an Aruba IAP 225, and uh, Peter went back to his room that night and had, you know, in that case, OmniPeak, but doesn't matter which, but had a, a network analyzer on his laptop, direct connected the AP with a crossover cable into the Ethernet port, and, you know, found a way to get power to it. That's the, the, the rough part for portable with the, uh, with the AP, but got it fired up, went into the command line, set a channel, set a bandwidth, and brought it back in here in a 10 talk, demonstrated capturing packets with the, with the Aruba IAP. Um, the, the benefit there is you get past, you know, the notion of two-stream adapters. Uh, you know, if you need something that's more capable, you need three-stream or four-stream, it may be a little bit clunky, but it works. And, and it, it works very well because it's a, it's a device that has better sensitivity, better receive sensitivity than any USB adapter you're going to buy. So, you know, even though it, it, it definitely is a solution that works. Um, it's a little difficult to power the AP um, and not overly portable. And we're back to the one channel at a time, unless you want to attach multiple APs, uh, which makes it even a little less portable. And there is limited vendor support. The reason I say that, the point I'm trying to make with that is um, it has to be an access point that can be a standalone access point. If it's an access point that's only going to work bad through a controller, then this, this approach doesn't work, right? The, the IAPs happen to be IAPs that can be standalone. You can get into the command line. You can set up the parameters for the access points independently, and that's part of the reason why it works. So again, these are all just food for thought, right? That these may not work in every situation you're going to be in, but by, just by hearing this, you may come across a situation where you think, boy, this is a unique situation. Oh, wait, this is that thing Jay talked about. Maybe I could, maybe I could connect an access point and make this work. Um, the MacBook, uh, the MacBook Air. I mean, I, I have to give this a plug as just you know a convenient way to capture packets because it is. Um, it, it's a great little device, three stream AC nowadays, and even if you use it simply to capture packets and then analyze them later in Wireshark or uh, any other network analysis software of your choice, um, it, it's a really convenient tool. As a matter of fact, it worked for me yesterday. We were in here, or maybe this morning. I didn't bring an adapter, um, and there was uh, when we were talking about the um, the EPO packets, right, in security. And he was like, "Hey, if you want to play along, you can do a capture." And I thought, looked at my bag, and I thought, "Damn, I didn't bring my adapters." Oh, but I got my MacBook, so I just fired it up. I captured the packets. I was able to follow along, and uh, it was great. You follow it's a WP PCAP file. I opened it in OmniPeak. Away I went. I could see all the packets. So it's a very convenient way. I know everybody might not have a MacBook, but it's a convenient way. Again, you know, to just another alternative for being able to capture packets, and it's fully remote. Far more portable than most of the other solutions because this MacBook Air is pretty light. And lastly, on the on the portable ones, and and this is unique to OmniPeak, um, but I bring it up just in case you're an OmniPeak user. There is a method from within. Uh, Kind of putting together a number of different pieces where you can use TCP dump from within the Mac kernel to tunnel the packets into OmniPeak so that you can save yourself the step of capturing first and then you know having to find those files and then open up an OmniPeak. So that doesn't give you the real time thing, right? With when you use just the MacBook to just capture the packets, you're capturing, you're stopping the capture, you're opening a capture file. If you want to see the data live, and hopefully you're getting this distinction, but you want to see the data live, you can use this TCP dump mechanism, and as the MacBook is capturing the packets, it will actually tunnel them to OmniPeak, and you can see the live capture within OmniPeak. If anybody's interested in this, just come find me after, and I can send you the instructions for doing this. I will say it's not the most straightforward thing around to be able to do this. Um, you kind of need to get into 
um, the VM on the machine. You need to find MAC addresses of ports and assign them correctly to be able to get the TCP dump to actually send the packets to OmniPeak. But it does work, and it does work reliably once you get this set up. And again, I only bring it up as, as an example for cases where you want to be able to go that one step further and not just use the MacBook to capture the packets, but be able to also see the data in real time as it's happening. So that covered kind of the portable cases. There, like I say, certainly there may be other types of portable cases. I didn't really cover the case where you've just got a built-in adapter that works. I figure that kind of gets covered by the USB adapters. So that's mostly portable. So now we're going into the, the, the remote. So just kind of to give you some, give back the perspective again, I lost my mouse. Yeah. All right, so covered portable. So now we're down to remote, the middle one, and I'll jump back over there. So remote, I think this is one of the, we blogged about it a little bit, but it was years ago. This is probably one of the more unique things that you could set up. So what that is, what the black box is, is it's a network based USB hub. So think of a USB hub, you, you know, four port, you plug into the one port on your USB on your laptop, but it's just, it's this little four port box that you plug in somewhere uh, onto the network. So you plug an ethernet cable into it, and then you plug USB adapters into it, just like you'd plug them into your computer, and that device looks like it's connected to your computer, even though you've connected it to a network connection somewhere 10 offices over, another building over. It doesn't matter how far away, as long as it's network ac accessible to you, it looks like the adapters are on your computer. And then just like you would do with your network analysis solution of choice, you can go in and set the channels on those adapters and set the bandwidth on those adapters and set those captures up however you want them and get those captures running. Um, I, I was always surprised that, it, that people didn't find this to be more useful than it is. We found it to be very useful. It basically makes like a little portable probe that you can make multiple channel um, for the price of however many network adapters you want and, and that box, which nowadays is getting harder and harder to find. So if you're interested in this kind of solution, I suggest you go to Amazon and, and buy one of those. Uh, they're down to about $88 for that little USB hub. Um, but uh, there's not a lot of them left, and in a lot of cases you're buying something that might even be used, but for the purposes you're going to use it for, it makes a great device. And at $88 to give yourself a portable analysis solution that you could plug in on a network somewhere, it's a great inexpensive way to do multi-channel analysis. Remote assistance, as I, I call it here. So, I, I, and I, you know, I'll call it, you know, Wireshark out itself, you know, and, and something that we have of our own. What I mean by a remote assistant is, and not everybody can would want to do this, but uh, this is basically asking a third party to capture the packets for you. So, um, you know, you can certainly do that with Wireshark, right? If you, certainly if you have knowledgeable people on the other end, you can get them to do captures for you. Um, we also have something that we embed within OmniPeak that we call the OmniPeak Remote Assistant, which is actually a, a, it's a little screenshot is what's down there you know, in the bottom corner. It's a very simple little executable that can be mailed to somebody wherever you want them to capture packets. It's, that is the only interface that you see, so it starts up, it runs, it shows the, the devices that they could capture packets from. You tell them which ones to check, it can be wired or wireless, but they can't mix, so that, that's pretty much it. Um, and then if it's wireless, they have to go pick a channel, and they click the start button, and they click the stop button, and then you just need to get those, those files back from them. Either they can either email them to you, Dropbox them, or whatever. Um, it's a very convenient solution when you can't be there. It's a very convenient solution for, uh, for technical assistance centers and those kind of guys. We have a very large AP manufacturer who uses this all the time for their remote troubleshooting. It's kind of their first step in remote troubleshooting before they send a field engineer out, they send this little executable. Sometimes they have to send in a, a dongle with it too, but that's okay, because that's really pretty cheap. And they send them the dongle, 
and they fire this up, they capture packets, the packets come back, and they can at least have a very good view of what's going on on that network before they send the field engineer out. So it, it usually saves at least one trip, maybe more. Um, I and, have, and I have a question on that. If you send that executable in a dongle, are your drivers included with the executable? No. Yeah. So they have to go through that? But, but, it, they have to go through the driver installation. Um, and I, I smiled when I said it because it, it's at, because I have several engineers who want to put this in the product every release. We've just been hesitant to do it. Actually, now we could because we only really have the Rayling drivers for the adapters. So, um, and, and we probably should for them. Um, but it, it's really quite handy. The only other caveat that I would say, and it's probably true nowadays for whether you were to ask somebody to do it with Wireshark, you know, or with OmniPeak Remote Assistant, you know, even though it's the, the, our remote assistant is actually very easy to use, um, like anything that does capture nowadays, you also have to be an admin or have admin rights on the computer, right? So, you know, sometimes if, you know, if we're asking, you know, not an, not an admin, but like, you know, an, an executive admin to capture packets at her desk, a lot of times she can't do this, right? There's users on the network that can't do this because they can't, they can't get admin rights to actually, you know, get to drivers and start captures. Um, and, and Windows 10 has actually made this a lot more complicated for everybody, in, including us. But anyway, just, you know, other alternatives. Um, and you can certainly do it with Wireshark as well. Um, rem yeah, TCP dump is, a, is another remote alternative, more popular for, for wired captures, but, but also can be done in certain wireless situations. Um, you know, again, most uh, solutions are going to have support for TCP dump within them. Um, it's great, you don't need to be there. It's, it's well supported. It's pretty much in every Linux distro you're ever going to find anywhere and on any, any appliance, any mini appliance, any even micro appliance you're going to find anywhere. Um, doesn't always have wireless support. That's one of the drawbacks. Uh, it does send the packets over the network. And the other thing that, at least in our experience with TCP dump, um, it has very low performance. We, we can get about 30 megabits per second back out of TCP dump before it really starts to crap out. Um, so um, depending on what you're capturing, what you need to capture, that may be plenty of bandwidth. Um, you know, you're certainly not going to be doing high rate AC stuff over TCP dump. Uh, remote PCAP, um, so this is, it, it kind of sounds like TCP dump, but, but it's actually not. So remote PCAP is something that, that ships with all the, the PCAP libraries. It's, it's, it's always in there. The question is, does every vendor um, give you access to it? It's usually there, but it, it may, you may or may not be able to turn on the daemon. The daemon may or may not be running on the device that you want to run it on. But there are several AP manufacturers that do have this running within their access points. Uh, certainly in the past, we've tested it with, uh, with, with Ruckus um, and with Arrowhive and, and got it to work just great. Um, there's an interface within our software where um, you go in and you, you, it's really hard to read from there, but the button that's highlighted um, is a button that says create PCAP and, and you click on that and then it just, it, because this actually, this PCAP, remote PCAP is actually, it, it's a standard, right? There's a daemon running, and there's actually communication back and forth. So it actually presents back to the software what adapters are available for capture. It's, it's really quite convenient once if you find a vendor that's, that's supporting it. So then you just pick the adapters uh, that you want to capture on, set those channels, and away you go. Um, it, it would be great if, if more, uh, you know, if we were able to put more pressure um, on the manufacturers to support remote PCAP because it is really a great way to be able to capture packets remotely uh, from access points with, without being very disruptive to the access point. Um, again, um, you, know, you don't need to be there, it's great. It is standard, it, it's, in, it's in the PCAP libraries. You could do multiple channels uh, because you can get access to multiple devices at the same time. It's real-time feedback. It's just not well supported. Uh, it does, again, send packets over the network, um, and it, it typically also has some bandwidth limitations, typically around 100 megabits per second. So switching into the last mode, distributed, um, and, and like I said earlier, distributed really gets to where uh, you're more of a, a network administrator, you know, IT of a large organization, probably not as suitable for, for people that are doing, uh, doing consultancy kind of work. But um, there's several ways also to deal with distributed. Um, you can build or buy, um, you know, either one, but you can certainly even build with things like T-Shark and appliance that will put it on whatever 
hardware you want to put it on, put it next to the racked equipment, in the racked equipment, however you want to do this, and build a remote capture appliance that it's headless. You're going to connect to it remotely from somewhere else. You can direct it to capture whatever you want, wired, wireless. Um, you know, you can build the box as big as you want it. Um, and you can capture, you know, from anything that you want to. Typically, in our case, we are using access points as the capture for these distributed kind of devices. Um, we could, and you'll see, and there's a few other solutions in here where we could use adapters as well. Uh, but for, for the distributed appliances, um, the idea here is you're building an appliance that's designed for 24 by 7 and for high throughput. That, that would be the only reason you'd go to this kind of level. And, and that's why we went to this kind of level. Um, the, the business kind of cases that we were trying to address here were, you know, mission critical wireless lands. The, the original business case we addressed with this was a trading floor where, um, you know, high density but small physical footprint, you know, compared to stadiums and that kind of thing. Um, and it was a situation where it was a lot of BYOD. So every trader brings their own devices. They trade from their phones. They trade from their tablets, et cetera. And when they would have trouble on the network during the day, of course, there was no time to troubleshoot that on the floor while they were doing that. You know, these guys are traders. We're, we're talking, you know, millions and millions of dollars at stake at every given moment. You know, the IT administrators would only ever hear about these things at the end of the day. They wanted a way to record all of the packets all day from the entire network so they could go back at the end of a day per user and look at issues. And that's exactly why you, why you would build a box like this. Again, like I said, we sell a box like this. You could easily build a box like this to do this. And it makes it very, very convenient. Well, you know, a 1U like that, you can easily fit 8, even 16 terabytes of disk in it if you wanted to. Um, that could handle, for example, the Super Bowl we heard about today, right? 11, 11 terabytes. You could collect the entire Super Bowl and go back and analyze anything you wanted to. Um, you can do the same thing with, with just straight software. You could do it with T-Shark. You could do it with, with our capture engine um, and, and run it on whatever uh, kind of box you want. For us, it would be software only. It's great. You can do multiple channels. Um, but you'd be limited to the adapters and, and the, the analysis options are a little bit lower now. You'd get about a gigabit per second. With the appliances, you, you know, you can do, uh, you know, really, well, from our perspective, you could do about three or four gigabits per second um, uh, on the appliances. So those are built for speed. The software is going to be a little less expensive, but you're going to uh, sacrifice performance a little bit. And even at 30 minutes, I'm running out of time. Um, and last thing is, uh, you could make that same switch. You could use the access points to capture the packets, but still use just the software solution. So distributed basically just means you're going to have software running somewhere out in the network near where all those devices are. So, so in summary, um, you know, hopefully what you took away was there's a lot of different ways to be able to capture packets. Not, you know, not Everyone is suited to every particular application you're going to come across, but hopefully you, I was able to expand a little bit your, your, your thoughts around the different ways to capture packets, and maybe in unique situations you'll find some of this information to be useful uh, for, 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 for solving a problem that you may have had difficulty pro uh, solving otherwise. Um, remember, portable, remote, distributed, that's the way I think about it, but that's the way you guys can maybe think about it too. And just so you know, we're always thinking about new methods. Um, Matter of fact, I, I just recently have had several conversations with other, uh, with other groups. We're trying to, you know, Savvy is trying to partner with other people in the industry so that we can find unique ways to actually capture the packets. We know as we get to three stream and four stream AC with, with more three stream AC clients, you know, the, the USB adapter limitation is going to become bigger. Um, people still want to be portable. We get that. You don't want to necessarily capture from access points because they're expensive and you maybe have to take some offline if you didn't plan ahead, we get that too. And we are working with other vendors, third parties, who are, are thinking of very unique and inexpensive uh, packet collection devices uh, that, that would be able to, to, to operate with Restream AC. So hopefully next year we'll be able to come back and talk some more uh, about that and, and have something for the industry that I, I think everybody is, uh, is looking for and is, is, will very much be in demand. So with that, uh, take any questions. I got about a minute and a half. That's okay. We can take questions. Any questions for Jay? Aguilar. Is this on, Scott? Is it on? Yeah. 
Can you hear me? Hi. Jay, I'm not sure I understood, and I've never tried to do that, but on one of your slides, it looked like you said that you could run a MacBook and run TCP dump from the command line in Mac OS 10 and pipe that into uh, uh, OmniPeak running in a Windows VM, is that right? Yeah, and I can send you the instructions to how to set up a TCP dump channel. And that's right. live, right? And, and, then, and then it's live, right, right. You, you have the limitations of, of the TCP dump running underneath there, right? So 30, 30 it, megabits. That's, that's kind of what we have found, right? But, but it definitely works and it's live. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'd like to try that. Yeah. Great, thanks. Any other questions for Jay? Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Jay.